Hello world, I'm here today just interrupting my couple of series that I've got on at the moment. I've got one about reading and writing music, watch it please, it needs some views, give it some love. And I've also got one about Beatles anomalies. And one question that I got asked quite recently was how come it's only Beatles and ABBA records that seem to have anomalies on them? And my answer to that was it's not true. That's not true. You can find them everywhere if you're listening, okay, or if you know what to listen out for. Once you've heard a few Beatles edits, then you'll start hearing them everywhere. And I also got an email from like the Jake Bug fan club or whatever, the, the website, whatever, saying Jake Bug's got a new single out, which it has, it's called Lost, and it's brilliant. From an album that as yet is not, is not out, it comes out in August, I, I believe. But I've got all of Jake Bug's stuff from, you know, going back from years ago and stuff, I've collected them as they've come out kind of thing. And I just think he is absolutely amazing. And so I thought, you know, oh, I've heard this song, this new song, whatever. Let's go back and listen to all these other ones because I haven't listened to them in ages. So I put on the first album, this one, just called Jake Bug. And by song three, I'd heard three or four different anomalies. <laughs> but more than that, I just was so chuffed to be listening to this music again that I haven't listened to in a while. It is so good. It really is so good. And this kid here is 19 in that photograph. And you hear how good he is. Right? This is, by and large, a live album. It's been made from a variety of sources, which is probably why the anomalies on here are, uh, are so obvious. Some of them are demo recordings, such as Broken, which you know has became a big single. Um, another one was recorded on his iPhone, that was Fire. Another one called Troubled Town was recorded, he's, they say, quote, by accident which means basically that he was running through this song called Trouble Town and someone had left the tapes and the microphones running and he was unaware of it. And so it does sound like it's sort of being played over an FM radio or something because he probably wasn't aware of being recorded and he was just sort of slumped on a settee somewhere running through this song. And I, and I bet you an engineer said to a producer, turn that on turn that recording on it's brilliant you know and then some record company bod came into the studio and heard this thing and, and said oh that's a brilliant song we'll have that and he said well jake said well i'll have to record it first I said, no you won't that's it you know so they so they worked from him playing off mic obviously overdubbed onto it and whatever but that was the basis the basis for that particular song so yeah there's, there's going to be anomalies galore over this thing all right but I want to talk a bit more than just the anomalies here because one of the influences was his uncle when he was age 12 uncle came round and showed him the chords to Mad World by Tears for Fears which has only got like two chords in them and you know Jake Bug's so modest so it was an it was an easy one to learn kind of thing you know when actually that song is a work of genius and I believe that even if he wouldn't acknowledge it I believe that kind of it kind of dripped in of this influence people say oh he sounds like Bob Dylan but actually he doesn't he doesn't sound like Bob Dylan at all. You've got this Tears for Fears song. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. And the songs on this album are basically about the kids that he used to go to school with, the kids he used to hang around with in Nottingham, which is a town in the Midlands of England, and it's got its problems. It's got its problems. That's why Trouble Town is Trouble Town, because it's about Nottingham. And so t the Tears for Fears song is this observation about the depression everywhere, which was like that in 1983, when Mad World was written, and was still like that in 2012, when this was written. And so it is social commentary, all right? He's not Bob Dylan, 
joke bug said oh it's a you know, it's a lazy comparison you see white man with guitar and you think bob dylan same as when Tracy Chapman came out in the late 80s, people saw Black Woman with guitar and everyone was making Joan Armour trading um, comparisons. And it's just stereotypical. And dare I say it, it's, it's downright racist. It's downright racist. It's not actually judging the music for what it is. Because if you put a Tracy Chapman record on and a Joan Armour trading record on, they're completely different. There's, you know, a whole sort of different kind of genre altogether you know, in Tracy Chapman's writing. Tracy Chapman is probably more akin to him. That's where this is coming from. It is social social commentary. If you want musical influences, some of these songs remind me of Robert Johnson. Now, Robert Johnson was a black singer from the, I think, like the 20s or 30s. There are recordings of him around. He goes down in mythology because people couldn't quite believe that a black person could play guitar better than white people could. And so they made up this story about him reaching a crossroads and meeting the devil and selling his soul to the devil at the crossroads. And I think Robert Johnson kind of quite liked it. But you can hear Robert Johnson on this album, uh, particularly on a song like Fire, which was the one that was recorded on his iPhone. Obviously, in this studio, they lathered it with crackly kind of things to make it sound like a 78 record and what have you. But it's essentially an iPhone demo. It's why there are anomalies all over the place on this on this album. All right. There are two songs here that I would see as being absolutely critical to this LP. And they're the ones that I can sort of tell you for definite also where the anomalies are. The anomalies are just tiny little accidents that happen. For me, I love them because they make it sound like it's been recorded by human beings and not by some sort of automaton. Quite often, records can sound very sterile and you know lacking in human depth. And it is the fact that there are mistakes on this which add to the humanity in, in this... Um, in this album. So the two songs are track four and track five on side one. Seen it all and simple as this. Seen it all begins one Friday night I took a pill maybe two and then carries on through to gate crashing a party then being told that everyone's armed with knives to someone getting stabbed. And people kind of got the wrong end of the stick about this, probably because they don't listen. But the chorus says, I've seen it all, I've seen it all. Nothing shocks me anymore. And it finishes with, I've seen the light, but it's not the kind that I would have liked. In other words, I've done it, don't you do it. Because that's the kind of thing that happens. That will go right back to the beginning. It starts out with some acoustic guitar followed by the band joining in. And it's during that that you hear the fact that the acoustic guitar at the beginning has been edited into another take, which is the full band. And you hear the edit, you hear the join as they're playing those thuddy chords. Um, and then we get to one Friday night, I took a pill maybe too. And as I say, in the word took, there's an edit. And what happens particularly, you need to, when you're trying to spot anomalies, don't find the basiest thing that you can find. Quite often, you can spot them on just little things like your iPad or something like that, which has you know, got a, a fairly restricted bass output. But I use my Bayer Dynamic headphones. These have really seen better days now. They are absolutely knackered. Somebody buy me another pair. All right, these Bayer Dynamics have got sort of a fairly uh, light bass. They're not bass light. They'll tell you what's there, but it is nowhere near as heavy as these B&Ws, which I think are probably over-egging the pudding, all right? So what you what you get is that in, I took a pill, maybe two, took the uh bit has come out, all right? If you're listening on a bassy pair of headphones, it will sound like took disappears for a second. It just cuts out and then comes back again 
right? It only lasts a split second. If you reduce the bass, you will hear that actually what happens is the word took flings across to the left for a second and then all the other vocals are in the centre and the word took flings across to the left and comes back again. So it's a pill maybe two, all right? That's that second anomaly there, all right? The other major anomaly is after the words gangster's crew, sort of about a third of the way in, you'll hear some sort of laughter or shouting or whatever going on in the background. It will come again, I think it's sort of somewhere around the centre left, somewhere if you've got it on your, on your headphones, it's somewhere about there, centre left, in other words. I don't know whether or not it was meant to be there, whether it was kind of some sort of harking to the party that we're at here, that we've gate crashed this party, given by a member of the local gangster crew, right? and then you've got this sort of whoa going on in the background. Whether it's an anomaly or whether it was on purpose, I don't know. I would suggest it's an, anom an anomaly because it's so quiet that unless you really are listening, you're not going to hear it. Now, simple as this, I would say is the total flip side to seeing it all. It's com social commentary about probably the same event. The, li the lyrics, I've been in search of stones, making up the pavements of less travelled roads, mining for treasure deep in my bones that I never found. In other words, this is somebody who is so lacking in love, support and peace of mind that they're going everywhere to try and find it. So we get, you know, the, the whole thing is just this sort of list of all the places and all of the things I've tried to do to find this inner contentment. Yeah, tried institutions of the mind and soul. I've tried absolution of the mind and soul. In other words, being purged of the devil, that's what that really means. This person who's singing this song is describing a being about the lowest than they could possibly be. And then about two thirds of the way into the song, we get the punchline, which comes in the middle eight. Now middle eights tend to do this. They tend to add some sort of detail to the song that is missing from the rest of it. Let me get the words here. I've been falling, crashing, breaking, this person's got. They're in a horrible place. This is more like what Robert Johnson is talking about in his songs. All the while you stood there waiting for me, girl. Now, this is not a romantic song. Girl could be anybody. It's the person that is missing in the lives of people that would take drugs arm themselves with blades and inflict injury upon someone. And this is kind of, thank God I got out. Thank God I have people there or someone there to kind of lift me out. And it is only through the support of others that you can actually find, maybe not complete sort of inner peace and everything, but they can certainly be the ones that support you and sort of push you in the right direction. I want to talk a little bit about how the lyrics contrast with the music. And the main sort of feature of the music is that although it's got this steady pulse going through it, dum, 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 its time signatures are all over the place. They chop around. The chords themselves are really nice and simple. If you've got the guitar chords, you put the capo on the first fret and play in the key of G, and you're basically just playing G, C, G, E minor, D, just you know, really very, very basic chords here. No real bluesiness or, or scrunchiness or anything, or diminished flattened sevenths or anything like that. It's just really, really simple, all right? But it is these time signatures going all over the place that adds the tension to the music, which keep you in suspense. They give a sense of wandering aimlessness because it really is quite hard to predict when you're gonna get that time signature change. And in the bit that I mentioned, um, the, the middle eight, I've been falling, crashing, breaking. We're even going into a five four. So it is kind of very difficult and unpredictable. And that's what 
keeps you kind of waiting for this punchline all the while you stood there waiting. I just think it's lovely. Right, so now we can talk about some anomalies. First one is in the first verse, mining for treasure deep in my bones. He doesn't actually say the word deep. It sounds like he's gone for the wrong word that could have started with a B and saved himself from, from it and just realising, oh gosh, mining for treasure deep in my bones. If you listen to other words he says that begin with D, it's clear, D, could have just been an edit, could have been a, a, a punch in, punch out kind of thing. Right, next bit is, so Owen the answer, well, who would have guessed, could be something as simple as this, something as simple as this. This is where the drums come in for the first time. Look out for these sort of places where you where you're going from a, a one instrument and a singer and then the rest of a band's coming in, there's likely to be edits around those places. And this one is no exception, right? Could be something as simple as this. And in the instrumental track during that, there, there's a dum, 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 dum kind of bit. Something goes dead in on, on the left-hand side. Something sort of drops out, the EQ changes, and then the music stops because we've got Jake Bug just singing on his own the the punchline, something as simple as this. Right? Except that there's an edit in the word simple as well, which becomes more like for impulse. Jake Bug has not got a lisp, uh, but his voice cracks there. That's that is important, okay? It's that there's a, a minute gap between the the s, which is nearly a th. It's not quite big as Dickers from Monty Python, but it is getting along those lines. You know, something as simple as this. By the way, I wasn't listening to vinyl at that point because you might think, well, vinyl might get a few odd noises and stuff on it. No, I wasn't. I was listening on headphones. I was listening on headphones on my iPad and on my iMac. Yeah, I, I think that's sort of all of the audible anomalies on there. Listen out for those two songs, because as I say, they're key to understanding at least the first two albums of Jake Bug's um, body of work. He used the term body of work. It's quite fun listening to, or quite weird, <laughs> listening to some 19, 20 year old person saying, I've just made Shangri-La and it's my second body of work. And they think, oh, hold on, <laughs> Beethoven wrote a body of work. <laughs> this one, Shangri-La, then, it's pretty much in the same kind of vein. The production on it is much slicker. As I say, this came from a whole load of different sources, demo material, whatever else. This is this is far more coherent. He, and he was in Miami at, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a much more slick version, as it were, of this. There's some great songs in here, like Messed Up Kids, it's fantastic, uh, Pine Trees, but Simple Pleasures, Simple Pleasures is just brilliant. Jake Buck's third album, On My One, as you can tell by the cover, represents a complete departure, at least lyrically, and there's some musical sort of influences that are coming in here, which are sort of more contemporary, some rap, for example. But we have got other songs like All That and Love, Hope and Misery and The Love We're Hoping For, which are more in line with his paired back acoustic style, but they lean more towards sort of country. It was recorded in a variety of places, as far away as Topanga Canyon, which, I'd imagine is somewhere in the States. I think in spirit, even if he was recording some songs in London, some songs in Nottingham, whatever, because of the nature of his job, he tours all over the place. And so I've, I suppose he just gets a few recordings in where, where you can, wherever he is. But in his mind, he was in America. And that comes 
from even though we have the word Nottingham in the first song, in the first line. I'm just a poor boy from Nottingham. But he doesn't sing that. He sings, I'm just a poor boy from Nottingham. Now, in England, with, with towns that end in ham, we tend not to pronounce the H. So Clapham, Birmingham. If you live in America, you come from Birmingham, Alabama. You might, anyway. If... You know, Jake Bug is aping that. It's very subtle, okay? It's it's kind of, you know, I'm on the road, you know, and I'm far away from home. And then I have to say, with Hearts That Strain, when I read the reviews prior to receiving it in the post, my heart sank. He's surrounded himself by expert musicians in Nashville, Tennessee. And oh my God, I just went to Taylor Swift. I just went to John Mayer. John Mayer, I like John Mayer. But it's not Jake Bug. It's not Jake Bug. There's nothing wrong with Taylor Swift either. But they're not Jake Bug. It is all part of that industry kind of churn it out, churn it out, churn it out. You know, and you'll get sacked if there's so much as one anomaly in there. Thankfully, this album is not as bad as that. Here's the cover. This cover is very strikingly similar to the cover of Hey Jira by Joni Mitchell. Hey Jira is about Joni Mitchell taking a long journey across America and sort of writing about what she sees and who she meets and things like that. And this is him going from England right down to Nashville, Tennessee. Right, that's his signature there, by the way, that I, I got an autograph copy because I was one of the first to order it or something. It's, although the music on this is totally different to this, it is the ethos. It represents that journey. With him, it's halfway across the world. With her, it's from Canada down to America. This album's a good album. It is a bit too much part of the well-oiled American showbiz machine kind of thing, but it's lovely. It's lovely. And How Soon the Dawn is one of my favourite Jake Bug songs, As Is Waiting, which is, oh God, Jake Bug featuring Oh, God, please don't ever... If I write a song that's Mark Pierce featuring someone else, shoot me dead. But, you know, that's what they do nowadays, isn't it? So-and-so featuring so-and-so else. But it's still a nice duet. So this has been a slightly incoherent video, just kind of me talking off the cuff, really. I've had to do a few bits again and what have you. But, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're inspired to A, go anomaly spotting in whatever music you're listening to, and B, get, in, get into Jake Bug a little bit. With that, I'll leave you. All right, bye.